simply because of horizontal drilling, as I mentioned, you're able to use those rigs, extract that uh, energy more efficiently with horizontal technology. That means you can take one rig, drill more wells every year, and that's reflected in the, these numbers. And then sand per well. The beauty to us and the beauty to the state of Wisconsin is when you horizontally drill, you're going to use roughly seven times the sand, seven times the propent that you do for a conventional downhole vertical well. Wow, that's huge. And you're seeing the impact of that right now. The growth, you can see 30% annual growth in sand demand in the last 10 years extraordinary. Of course what that means is the more rigs that are out there and the more sand that's used, the more rail cars that are needed, the more trans transport uh, requirements will really be. And we're really, as you can see from this, the onshore operating rigs that are out there growing dramatically again because of the demand. You know, we're around 1900 rigs out there and you correlate that to the amount of sand and rail cars that's uh, running out there annually right now, frac sand, uh, you're probably looking at uh, 90,000 or so, 80 to 90,000. Uh, so that's a lot of shipments, that's a lot of material being transported. What about the sand itself? Just very quickly, this is a little bit confusing, but it's a geologic slide uh, showing where the very best frac sand is. That red color that you see on that map, that's where we are. Wisconsin, eastern Minnesota. From what we know today, it's the best frac sand in the world. That may change next week. Somebody might find a, a very, very high quality frac sand uh, deposit in Turkey next week. We'll wait and see. But the geology that's been done out there says that we are right here where the best frac sand is anywhere in the globe. What makes frac sand uh, so good? Well, and you the look entire at array of uh, requirements, as I say, Wisconsin and eastern Minnesota is the absolute best sand that's known out there. There are three very well-known deposits in the sand industry, the St. Peter's geology, goes straight down the middle of the United States. Oddly enough, you get into uh, glacial till if you go much north of where we are in Barron County. Uh, that's a lot of rocky, uh, uh, contaminated material. So there's nothing really in, in Canada. But if you start from Wisconsin and you go south, you get a very nice St. Peter's uh, geology, which is a very nice industrial sand. The coarsest sand, though, and this is very important to those of us in Wisconsin, the coarsest sand is at the northern edge, and then it gets finer as it goes down. So right now, there's high demand for coarse sand for oil. Not as much finer grade sand in demand for gas. So there are nice frac sand deposits in Illinois, nice frac sand deposits in Missouri, maybe to some degree in Arkansas, a lesser degree in Texas but they're not in demand right now. Not as much at all as coarse sand, which is right here where we are for, uh, for oil. The Jordan deposit and the Wanawak deposits are specific to this area. We're in the Wanawak deposit. It's a great deposit. It's a very coarse deposit. It's a nice round sand. The sand up here is 600 million years old, six to 700 million years old. The sand in Texas, which is a very average sand, is only 300 million. So it's amazing what a few hundred million years can do to your, <laughs> to your sand. But hey, this is a global opportunity, and we're sitting right at the epicenter of it all. Look at this chart. Yes, we're way ahead. The U.S. is way ahead, leaps and bounds on the horizontal drilling technology. But look where the shale fields are. China, huge. We're right there. USA is a strong second. A lot more gas, a lot more oil uh, in our own country. Argentina, a lot of drilling is just starting in Argentina. That's a growing hot spot. Um, 
Of course, you can see Canada as you work your way through South Africa and Australia. Uh, the service companies, the E&Ps, the exploratory and production companies are all beginning to look at those shale fields now, seeing great opportunity. This presents great opportunity for us. It presents great challenges. Get back to Jenny's slide and just to say, let's focus on the U.S. Uh, it seems like every month somebody comes up with another shale field that says there's a wealth of oil and gas in this country. There's a wealth of oil and gas in Canada too, which people are excited about. Literally about 60 days ago they found the largest, they think, gas shale field in the world in British Columbia. So we're finding new deposits all the time. Um, the Dakotas are very hot right now. Texas is very hot right now. Uh, when you, when you look at the, uh, the Eagleford and the Permian Basin. Uh, back east, it's largely gas, but you've heard a lot of talk about the Marcellus. You've heard a lot of talk about the Utica. The point of all of this is there's natural gas opportunities cropping up all over the continent. California, just with a major supplier the other day, they're getting excited about ca Southern California. We'll see how the environmentalists react to that. California <laughs> is getting attention again because they found more and more shale opportunities there. The issue is we've got to get to everybody and we've got to get from Barron County and from Chippewa County, Wisconsin and this part of the state certainly elsewhere to all these areas because they need this product to make this tremendous opportunity happen. Uh, just a, a, not a very good slide, but a slide of our loadout at New Auburn. Uh, we're real happy. Uh, we're, we're up in Dover Township. Uh, we've worked very closely with uh, Barron County, County and the community people there. We got this plant up and going um, in about a year's time with a lot of support and cooperation, dealing with a lot of challenges, of course, that the community and the state uh, uh, and even the federal government uh, might have. But with the right attitude and work with a working relationship, we've actually created a partnership. And I know that's contrary to what people read in the newspaper and maybe see on TV. Yes, I know it's not smooth going and I know there are challenges and I know there are concerns by people. But my point is there is a common ground. If you operate a sand operation responsibly with the technology, we're regulated more than anybody else probably in the mining industry there is a way that this can be done responsibly and to the satisfaction of all the concerns that people might have. So we're proud to be there and we're proud to be shipping product on a daily basis. Great sand, great products, our customers are delighted. This is the Clinton plant and I want to show you a video of this because it touches on Kevin's comments. When we completed the uh, new Auburn plant which is whatever, 40, 40 minutes from here, north of here. Uh, question was, what do you do now? Our customers kept coming back saying, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, the demand is going to continue. The obvious answer was, let's go ahead and build another plant. Mark Silvey's here from Barron County. He was one of the many people that we went back to and said, look, you know, we want to work with you again. We want to expand. This is a great place to call home. We like it here in Wisconsin. We like it in Barron County. Uh, let's work together for the good of the entire area. We were able to do that. This is a world-class plant, 2.4 million tons a year, fully enclosed plant. We had a major customer visit that plant yesterday from Calgary. He, did, he expressed it better than I can. He got out of the car and he said, wow, I've never seen an industrial sand plant like this ever. This is world class, and it is. But to make that happen, we had to figure out, okay, we found great sand in Barron County. We found a good site here along US Route 8, just west of the town of Barron in Clinton Township. How are we gonna get it to the customer? This is where Kevin and the CN Railroad came in. They had a, uh, a railroad that hadn't been used that went from Lady Smith to Almina, cut right through Barron County. And we said, uh, might there be an opportunity to work with the CN? If we can work as partners, 
with the county, with the township, with the railroad, could we all come together for the good of everybody, for the good of everybody in the area. And the CN was wonderful to work with. And I'd like to show you, let's hope Sam can work some magic here. We do have a short five minute video that talks a little bit and describes a little more about this wonderful partnership and the opportunity of getting this rail into this world-class sand plant. Sam? Get to that, but if not, I think it's important, I'll just describe quickly that uh, uh, it took a lot of effort. This was a 40-mile uh, track to be rehabbed, um, close to $40 million uh, by the CN. Uh, we had to work closely with them to ensure that that investment made good business sense. Uh, we signed a 10-year contract with them in this partnership uh, that would assure them a, a decent amount of uh, tonnage to be shipped on that rail to justify that investment. We had a celebration with the county and the towns, townships uh, celebrating the partnership itself. The partnership not just of Superior Silica Sands and the CN, but the partnership with the county, Barron County and Clinton Township. Um, because this is a wonderful thing, not just for the sand industry, but for this part of Wisconsin to improve this rail service to the point that my hope is, and I know Mark and the county would hope, that other diversified industries are attracted to this part of Wisconsin as a result of this added rail capability. So it's a very exciting thing from that standpoint. The other thing I'll say is we're doing our part. Uh, we are uh, going to hire, December 1st, this new plant starts up. We're going to hire um, uh, 92 people initially. We've already got 94 people hired at New Auburn. When we get this plant ramped up by spring, our company alone will have 225 employees. Our operating budget for both of those plants will be $85 million a year. Now you can read in the Wall Street Journal, you can read in Fortune Magazine, what kind of multiple does an operating budget like that generate for the local economy. If you're in the banking business, service businesses like banking or fast food restaurants, it's a two to three multiple. For mining and manufacturing, it's six to seven. What does that mean, given the operating budget I just mentioned for Superior Silica Sands? We are contributing, we will be contributing, over half a billion dollars of economic advancement to Barron County and the surrounding area. We're very proud of that. That is a significant, significant impact to the area. We're bringing people back from out of the area who have family here who couldn't find good high paying jobs. These jobs start at $17.50 an hour, they go to $25.50. Great jobs. People are coming back to the area excited to be with their families and to have good jobs. Those are all good things. We still know, yes, there are challenges. We, we still have to deal and we are dealing every day with a lot of the issues that we spoke about it with the county and the township on environmental issues, health and safety issues. Those are very, very critical to where we are. Sam, thank you for regrouping on that. Okay, uh, so this is the plant itself. One of our competitive advantages being in Wisconsin is it's fully enclosed. It's the only fully enclosed plant, at least in this part of Wisconsin, and we, we had a learning curve at the new Auburn plant because there were days when, uh, yes, we would uh, put the sand into a feed hopper that conveyed into the plant that was enclosed. The feed hopper froze solid, solid block of sand. So we said, we gotta fix this. So we spent a lot of money, a lot of money, to fully enclose the plants. We're not going to have that problem this year. We're going to be making sand every day. The railroad is assuring us, both the UP and the CN, because uh, the new Auburn plant is on the, the UP, progressive rail uh, short line that hooks up with the UP, that we're going to make sand every day. They're assuring us, and I'm counting on them too, to ship sand every day. So that's going to work out just fine. 
Speaking of rail, I know there's a focus in the room here. We've spent a tremendous amount of money on infrastructure. Uh, we just spent uh, about $3.8 million to add more storage track space at New Auburn. We can store now about 260 cars uh, just to take care of our, of our customers and managing their, uh, their uh, sand deliveries. And the uh, plant up at, um, at Clinton Township ultimately will have 500 car storage space. Big, big time operation. Uh, and this gets to what, what, what I was, I talked about the new Auburn plant, we're on the progressive. What we wanted to do when we made the decision to get with the CN rail and to move up to Clinton is it was an important strategic discuss, discussion for us to be able to offer our customers both the UP and the CN. Because depending on the location of where you're going to those shale fields that I showed, uh, that can offer certain advantages given the different tracks and the destinations and the strengths of, of those locations. The CN, as I mentioned, is on, on the, on the uh, I'm sorry, the Clinton plan is on the CN railroad. And this flexibility and the network of storage sites and transload sites that we're developing now around the country uh, is what our customers demand and it's what we need to do to be successful in this business. And it doesn't seem to be an end to it. More and more is being uh, demanded of the customers. This is what they expect to be competitive. Uh, just very quickly, this is the routing. Jenny showed the UP, and with the, you can see the, the strength again of both uh, railroads. It gives us an opportunity to effectively get our frac sand products throughout North America, Entire which was program. the intent of the entire if you look into the future, where is all this going, especially from a logistics uh, freight standpoint? Well, we're going to see that dramatic growth level off a little bit. We're not going to continue to see 28, 30% annual growth of frac sand demand. Uh, it'll, a lot of this will depend on natural gas, which has uh, been soft in the last uh, year to 18 months. So. Our expectation is you're going to see 8 to 10 percent growth annually going forward. If gas takes off, it's a whole other game. You're going to see higher growth than that. That's still very solid growth, still very important. Uh, this business has always been cyclical. There's been peaks and valleys depending on uh, the economic uh, equations that I just showed you, the metrics that uh, drive the price of oil and gas. So we're learning to live with those peaks and valleys, but because these shale fields are out, pieces have been sized for drilling to be done, and because all the wells that are out there now need to be refracked periodically, the, the trough, if you will, the peaks and valleys, especially the valleys I should focus on, are not going to be as dramatic as they've been 10 years ago. This is going to be a little more steady business with softer peaks and valleys. Uh, there is capacity coming in the market. You know that. You, you know how many people have put permits in place and so forth in Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, there's more growth coming on. The demand is going to stay strong. The strong sand players are going to survive. The leaders are going to continue. Uh, some, a lot people of people are not going to get it done. They're not going to get through the permitting process. They're not going to get to the ultimate point of actually producing and commercially selling sand. We've seen some of that already. And some who have gotten through the process have struggled for various reasons. So we're going to see some of that. And there is more capacity coming on, but I think the demand, again, is going to stay strong. And the people who are doing the job responsibly, the people who have the logistics and the, the freight infrastructure are the ones that you're going to see at the top of the list as far as the most successful frac sand International companies. markets, you saw that graph earlier, it's in its infancy. It's just starting. People are just starting to understand what they have in the ground right now and they're just now starting to understand what uh, horizontal drilling is all about. It won't surprise you the Chinese have discovered it. They're actually getting big into understanding the technology and to uh, coming in to basically learn the process. Uh, producer base will diversify. Uh, we're seeing a lot of companies 
wanting to back integrate, to buy sand companies, both service companies, the Slumberjays of the world, the Baker Hughes, the Halliburton's customers that we deal with, they're taking a very hard look at back integrating. Maybe we should buy into the sand business, back integrate. Even the E&Ps, the Exxons, the Shells of the world are taking a look saying, you know, is this something we should get into? So the ownership base will likely change over a period of time as people look to back integrate. You'll see some of that. But again, the economics and the it's success like of the company and logistics will be right there in the middle of all of it as a real driver in our economics and our, in our level of success. The railroads, you're going to be shipping more sand. You're going to be shipping to broader and more diverse destinations everywhere. It, it, to ports for international shipping all over North America. Mexico starting to get big as well. So that's going to be a challenge for all of us. Unit train shipments, everybody's looking now, can we get our cost down if we ship large unit trains, 80 cars at a time, 100 cars at a time? Does it make sense when we go to the Permian, when we go to the Eagleford, the Balkan, uh, can we get those cars in and out in a reasonable time? You know, what kind of challenges are there or bottlenecks to make that happen? That's always a big issue. I don't see freight dropping. You know, the railroads uh, um, are going to demand uh, the pricing that they need. Uh, but service is going to be Storage and transload and sites, some of them are overpopulated right now with the uh, softness in the market right now. But if you've got strategic locations for that storage and that transload. Again, as the growth continues, um, you're going to be in a better competitive position if you've located yourself well at the destination point where the customer can pick up his product. So that's an issue to work very hard on. Just and the words part of, uh, you know, somebody else has to get the product. We have to work in concert with you with the railroads, with the trucking companies to uh, make sure that this happens every day. So with that, we're excited, and I hope you are too, about what's going on in the frack world. And it's, ha it's just a great thing to be here with you and to uh, hear the interest that's out there about this industry. We want to work closely with you in any way we can to uh, work together and make this happen. Thank you. Good question, Paul. There's a lot of sand here. I mean, we have uh, sand deposits right now uh, for 25 to 30 years, but we're not going anywhere. Uh, one of the questions asked in the community is, well, you're going to come in here and you're going to take our sand and you're going to be out of here in five to 10 years. We'll never see you again. You don't make this kind of an investment. Uh, most, most sand plants are in existence for 80 to 100 years. So we're not going anywhere, and there's plenty of sand here. The issue is the quality of the sand can vary. As you come south, even from we are, where we are in Barron County, the sand is not as coarse. It's good quality sand, don't get me wrong, but you know, coarseness is an issue that we all look at. But there's plenty of sand. The other issue, though, back to the railroads is, where is that sand? If it's too far from a track, a rail track, you're not going to be competitive. So there's a lot of good sand that we've seen in this area, but it's not where it needs to be to make it efficient to truck it to the rail side. That's the yes, challenge. And uh, we're fortunate because you're exactly right. Coarse sand is in demand right now. Barron County is a wonderful place to be because we have probably the coarsest fraction in the industry. Others are trying to follow us as a result of that because of this dynamic right now in the marketplace. When gas comes back, everybody's happy. 40, 70 mesh products, finer grade sands are being sold. Even the mines down in Missouri, Arkansas, they'll get active. Right now, a lot of those mines have closed down because they don't have customers. They don't have outlets for that finer sand. Get right to it. Yes, sir. Right. 
how uh, many uh, mines supply each of the two facilities, and then also what is the radius of the trucking that brings the sand into each of those facilities? Into our facilities? Yes. Uh, well, we have one major mine in uh, Chippewa County in Auburn Township for the new Auburn plant. Uh, and it's got uh, 40 million tons, uh, 400 acres. Um, and it's, I'm going to say it's nine miles south of our dry plant. And similar mileage for the uh, Clinton plant that we're building right now. We're going to have two mines feeding that, uh, that plant. And they're, I'm going to say, nine, maybe nine miles again south of that plant. So that's typical radius if you can stay you know, hopefully um, 10 miles or less from your dry plant and your rail track, uh, you should be okay. You go extensively beyond that 20 miles or whatever, that's really risky. So how are you for you? By truck. Yeah, I mean, I guess to Dan's uh, comments, uh, we were very careful on where we're locating because we want to be on a U.S. highway if we possibly can, but where we are on a township or a county road, as Mark can tell you, we work closely with him to make sure that uh, we pay our dues. And that's fair. Well, Rick, thank you for an outstanding <laughs> What a great story to, uh, that Rick has to tell. I, I, I think that the availability of sand in Wisconsin and, and uh, plentiful and lower cost energy supplies for our country and the world, it's going to be one of the great facilitators of economic growth regionally, nationally, and, and globally in, in the years to come. So what